everyone, today we're going to be taking a look at Ghostbusters the Video Game Remastered for the Nintendo Switch. Now, this game was in my pick of the top 5 physical releases for the month of October. And the question we're going to be answering today was, was it deserving of that spot? Basically, a week has passed since the release of this game on October 4th. I've managed to play through it all and today we're going to look together to see if it was worth the $30 I spent on it. So, Ghostbusters the video game, what is it exactly? First of all, it's a remaster of an Xbox 360 slash PlayStation 3 game. And although it's been released also for the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4, it's really much more important for Nintendo owners if you haven't owned the other two systems. The reason why is because back in the day, for the Nintendo Wii, we got a completely separate game released, which was a cartoony, completely separate storyline, really not as good as the PlayStation 3, Xbox 360 variants of the game. And this time around, we will be getting the full cinematic experience that is this game. Because actually, it's like a spiritual successor to the first two original movies of the 1980s. And actually, the events of the video game follow directly two years after the second movie. And honestly, do not be mistaken, right from the get-go, this game makes you feel like you're really watching a Ghostbusters movie. And it really is more of a cinematic experience that you get to play through than actual video game that looks like a movie. So, the basic storyline of this game is you play a nameless recruit that's just been hired by the Ghostbusters to help them with their paranormal extermination activities. And they make you know just from the get-go that basically they don't even want to learn your name because you are really the new guy who's basically learning the ropes and testing out their new equipment. And thereon, basically all hell breaks loose when the brand new Grozer exhibit hitting the New York Museum is hit by a paranormal wave of energy. And from there on out, you join the boys hunting down traditional Ghostbusters lore, like the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man, the Grey Lady in the library. But we're not going to go way deeper than that because I don't want to ruin any of the major storyline arcs for you guys. Because honestly, as I said from the beginning, this is a cinematic experience that if you're an original Ghostbusters fan, even if the gameplay wasn't that good, you would still want to go through it just to experience, like I said, the spiritual third Ghostbusters movie, which, was, which is way better than anything that's been released in the last 10 years, Ghostbusters-wise. And you know what I'm talking about when I talk about that. But, you know what? You don't even have to worry about that gameplay. Because the gameplay in Ghostbusters the video game is actually really, really well done. You basically play from a third person perspective, sort of an over the shoulder view. And it is a action shooter type game. Think slightly Gears of War. And basically, the game does a perfect job with its gameplay of making you feel like you really are a Ghostbuster with a proton pack strapped to its back. You get to shoot your proton pack, you'll eventually be using a slime gun and a lot of other Ghostbusters gadgets. And honestly, the feel when you trap a ghost, because yes, after weaken it with your proton pack, you're going to have to trap, throw down that trap and trap your own ghosts, is really honestly completely immersive and really sells you on that Ghostbusters feeling. The only major downside I would say in the gameplay is that your character when trying to move it quickly to dodge out of the way of attacks or whatnot does move quite sluggishly would be the best way of putting it. Once again think Gears of War. Sometimes dodging away from attacks and things like that isn't exactly obvious because your character moves very stiffly and there is only one general dodge button that is also the run button and sometimes the responsiveness it's like your character doesn't know exactly what you're asking it to do are you asking it to start running or asking you are you asking it to dodge out of the way and that half second that the game takes to decide on what exactly you're asking it to do sometimes is more than enough for you to get hit by that attack and you know in some unfortunate instances die in a frustrating way however overall the good really does outshine the bad. And what is most important about this game and that you can see the developers really banked on was selling that Ghostbusters experience, like I said earlier. And 
you could maybe think that the reason why you're sluggish is because you're most likely wearing a 150 pound proton pack on your back. So it maybe does make sense that your character isn't exactly jumping around like a jackrabbit. So overall, the gameplay is very pleasing. It's very satisfying. And it does match up with the Ghostbusters universe, even though, like I said, there can be a couple of times where it'll cause a little bit of frustration. Now, let's talk a little bit about the visuals of this game. So, it's obvious, you've been seeing cutscenes from the beginning of this video. You can tell that this game wasn't a game made from the ground up for modern consoles. You can tell that it's a remaster of a game that was released quite a few years ago. The graphics do look a lot better than the originals, but the cutscenes will really give away the age of this game. However, during the gameplay, I've got to say they seem to have put more emphasis on, put, on making the gameplay up to today's standards and the graphics during the actual uh, gaming, because they actually look better than the cutscenes themselves, which is odd for a video game. But overall, the visuals of the game are enough to keep you immersed in the world once again. Although, like I said, if it was done for the ground up for modern consoles, it could have come out probably much better than just a remaster of the original game, which was at a lower resolution. The next point I want to touch on is sort of a public service announcement. Do yourself a favor. If this is your first time playing through the game, play through it once at least in casual mode. You could probably get away with playing at higher difficulties, but honestly, you're probably going to be living through quite a bit of frustration. The reason why is that the checkpoints in this game aren't always very well spaced out and there are actually quite a few difficulty spikes towards the beginning of the game. And if it's your first time getting used to the controls, getting used to the gameplay and exactly what you need to do, you can actually restart a few sections over and over. And unfortunately, because the cutscenes can be quite long and the checkpoints far apart, uh, I know quite a few people that but when they started on the higher difficulties gave up on the game very early just because of those early difficulty spikes. So do yourself a favor, experience the game once on casual, get used to the gameplay and the mechanics of the game, and then do a second playthrough on one of the higher difficulties. Honestly, it's not a very long game at about, I would say, around seven or eight hours of gameplay. So but it really is worthwhile playing a second time at a harder difficulty. The first time is really to experience the story and get a handle on how to play the game. And the second time around, you can really sort of give yourself that challenge to really feel like a real Ghostbuster and have to a hard time at trapping those ghosts. So the last element we want to touch on before giving this game a score would be the price that they decided to release it at. So in the US, it was released for $29.99. Here in Canada, it's $39.99, and honestly, that is a decent price for this experience. Like I said, the game isn't that long at seven or eight hours, but there is quite a bit of replay value in it. At the same time, it is a remaster of quite an old game. So selling it for any more than this just wouldn't feel right, because honestly, most of the development fees were already paid for this game years ago. And it's actually really funny because this game didn't actually sell that well when uh, during its original release. I think there was only a few million copies sold worldwide. And a lot of people are hyping this game up, which means that it might actually break those records on its second release. Now, there is one very important part of thing that you have to know about this game as well. It's that for the moment, uh, multiplayer online play is not enabled. It is something that the developer has said that they will be adding later on, but for the moment, there is actually no date on that. And unfortunately, this developer in the past has had a history of sometimes releasing these elements quite a bit far down the road. So if they manage to release it, I would say within the next two to three months, we're looking at a decent experience for the online play. If they release it any further away from that, the problem is, is that most people that have bought the game will have moved on by then, and it's gonna be sort of a moot point, and you're probably gonna have trouble picking up games online. So I really hope that they push to release the online play. Like, the ideal situation would be in the next month. If they release that in the next month, I think we could get a decent community going, at least for a few months of this game, for online play. So, overall, now we're at the score for Ghostbusters the video game. 
And I'm actually going to be giving it two scores. The first score is the perspective of an everyday gamer. You're not a huge fan of the Ghostbusters series. You maybe don't even know what the original movies are. To you, this game is probably going to hit somewhere around a 7.5 out of 10. It's a very decent and solid game, but at the same time, you're not going to be running out to the stores. It's not probably going to be first on your list. However, if you are a fan of the original movies, if you are a Ghostbusters fan in general, well then this game will be probably be scoring for you are more around an 8.5 because it is a very solid experience and honestly if the online play was already enabled I'd even say it would be a 9 out of 10 for a Ghostbusters fan. So overall Ghostbusters the video game is a must pick up for a Ghostbusters fan and if not and you've got 30 bucks you know lying around honestly there's way worse games to spend it on than Ghostbusters a video game. So even if I wasn't a fan, I would still say it's a decent pickup. So as usual, guys, if you think about buying Ghostbusters a video game, uh, I linked it down below, but it won't be an affiliate link this time around because this is a uh, GameStop exclusive or EB Games here in Canada. So you will have to go out to one of those stores or online to pick it up and they don't have affiliate links for the moment. So, you know, I'll leave a link down below, but use it if you will, or you pick it up on your own. It's not gonna change anything this time around. But what you could do to help out is please like and please subscribe if you aren't already. And as in every video, I hope I'll see you guys in my next one.